Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for joining me if I haven't got to meet you yet. Hi, my name is Pastor Deust and I'm a real pastor who plays Pokemon, Doom, and everything in between, all with the intention of sharing God's love with the gaming world because I believe God loves gamers and so do I. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoy your stay. Um, we're going to start a little different, differently than we usually do. <clears throat> um, we're going to be praying for Israel. Uh, if you haven't seen, um, just <laughs> go on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, anywhere. Everyone's seeing it and talking about it right now, but um, <clears throat> hundreds of rockets and drones and whatever uh, attacking from Hezbollah and Lebanon, which isn't anything particularly new, but it's um, a lot uh, going on today in retaliation. And um, <clears throat> a mass shooting has also taken place in Tel Aviv, as I understand it, those uh, terrorists are now dead, but still, we're opening in prayer. What's up, y'all? Mr. Wes, Captain Fury, Shadow, Coco, welcome. All right, so we're we're just starting with a word of prayer, or a time of prayer. I don't know how long. <laughs> y'all know me, I can pray for hours, so we'll see. We'll see how long it goes. Yeah, it's it's definitely insane. Definitely insane. Mm. Absorb. Good to see you. Absorb. Yeah, I'll continue praying for you. I was really encouraged by what you're saying in, in Discord. Uh, Chad, good to see you. Welcome in. <clears throat> All right. Also, uh, the prayer uh, tool isn't working again. Um, I had to restart my PC. It was the first time since I got the PC. <laughs> I've actually turned it off. Um, but restarted it, and it, it reset all those settings. So, exclamation point pray isn't going to work right now. But um, And I'll be praying for a while, but we'll pray over prayer requests and things too, as I see them. But just be patient with me if I get way behind on that. <sighs> Father, God, we love you. We praise you. Lord, you are so good. Even when people are not, even when we see hate and evil and wickedness in the world, we know you are still good. You are still on your throne. You are sovereign. None of this takes you by surprise. And I find great comfort in that truth because I know who you are. I know that you are good. I know that you are holy, that you are righteous that you are right in all your ways. And because I know who you are as you've revealed yourself in Scripture, I have complete faith and trust in you. Lord, <laughs> all I can do is hold on to that faith, to that trust when I see these kind of things happen. As a person, it, it hurts my heart to see hate. It, from childhood, I could never understand it. I, I still don't. I doubt I ever will. How people can just completely, violently hate other people for whatever reason. Especially like this, people you don't even know. But because <clears throat> because of where they live, because of the language they speak or the color of their skin or a different culture, a different background. <sighs> but even though I can't understand it, it's a reality. I see it happening. And it hurts. It hurts me to see. I hate that. And I can only imagine the holy, righteous anger that you feel as you see people created in the image of God hating other people, taking the lives of other people. I know it says in your word, 
There are six things the Lord hates, seven things that are an abomination to him, feet that are swift to spill blood. Read about it all through the Old Testament. In the Psalms, David's prayer about that and against that. (laughs) And I can identify with a lot of what he says there. Where part of my, my heart is like an imprecatory prayer. Lord, break the teeth of the wicked. Break the arms of the wicked. There is that. I won't shy away from that and say, part of me doesn't feel that way. Also, I know that all these things must come to pass. I know what's written about. I know what the the prophets say. I know how things have to play out because you've told us beforehand and we're even told to be comforted in these knowing that Hey, it's not forever. There's there's a light at the end of that ta- that tunnel. These things must come to pass. And so I take comfort in that. But Lord, I I hate to see it. I hate to see it for uh myself, my own eyes to have to see this and know that it's there. I hate this for my kids to grow up in a world where this stuff is happening. But Lord, I trust you. Pray that your will is done. But if I can make a petition, <laughs> a prayer, It's simply that it would end quickly. That it wouldn't be long and drawn out where more people have to die. I want to see peace. I want to see love towards our fellow man. And I know one day that's coming. One day, all of this stuff will pass on. Like, it will be a memory. I know that. I'm looking forward to that. (laughs) Lord, I pray for the peace, the safety, the wisdom of the people and the leaders of Israel. I pray that your hand would be over them as it looks like it already has been. From what I'm seeing and reading, hundreds of rockets and I've only read of one casualty, which was uh, against a a Palestinian in Gaza just by a piece of a rocket that fell on them, didn't detonate or whatever. (sighs) I know people lost their lives in Tel Aviv today. Lord, I pray that your hand would be over Israel, that all the different things that are in place to protect them would continue to hold up, to do what they're supposed to do, what they're designed to do. And I know there's going to be retaliation. And I understand that. But 
But God, I just pray all this would come to an end quickly. I pray for wisdom for world leaders who have to navigate these things. And us as just lowly, whatever, random people, we don't know all the things that are going on behind the scenes and motives and politics and all this garbage. But Lord, I pray that justice would be done. That truth would, um, would shine through all of that stuff. God, I pray for peace and end to the pain, the suffering, the hatred, the bloodshed. I pray for those leaders that you would give them um, wisdom and discernment to navigate these things, to have to make difficult decisions with the limited information that they have. Like I prayed, I know all these things have to come to pass. And part of me is excited about that reality because I know that means we're just a little bit closer. But also part of me is just sickened by it. And I hate to see it. So Lord, guard my mind, my heart, my emotions through this. As, as it says, we quote so often here on the stream, Philippians 4, the Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would guard my heart, my mind, with your perfect peace as I'm praying, as I'm petitioning, as I'm bringing my supplication and all this with thanksgiving. I don't know that I'd say I'm anxious. It doesn't really affect me at all. But it, it hurts my heart to see and to know. But I also know I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I, I have to live in this age of technology and information and access to all this. And I can only trust that you wouldn't have put me here if you weren't going to give me the grace to walk it out, to navigate it, to live through this, and to lead my church through these things to lead my family through these things. Feels like I've had to help them navigate so many major uh, life experiences just in the past few years. And, and I don't know. I don't have the answers. I'm just trying to survive and figure all this out too. But So Lord, I pray for wisdom because I need it. We all do. It says in James, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives liberally without reproach. But let him ask in faith, without doubting. For the one who doubts is like a man tossed on the sea. <sighs> man who looks in the mirror forgets what sort of man he is. So, Lord, give me wisdom. I know we're called to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. 
but I also know that all these things have to come to pass. So I'm trying to pray both. Pray that what has to happen happens quickly, that your plans, purposes, and prophecies and all these things would unfold as they must. But my petition, my prayer is that it it happens quickly and peace can be established. Lord, I pray for others um, who are, are seeing and hearing these same things today and maybe they are filled with anxiety. Maybe they are worried about the results of these, about, um, you know, this domino could lead to that domino and boom, 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 all of a sudden we're at, you know, the end of the world. <laughs> um, God, I pray that you would guard their heart, their mind with your perfect peace, that they would not be fearful, for we know that you do not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So if anyone is anxious, if anyone is fearful, if anyone is worried, Lord, I pray that they would find true, perfect peace that passes their understanding in you. That they would cast all their cares, all their anxieties on you. For which of us by worrying could add one inch to our height or day on to our life? But we know and trust you've got this all under control. None of this takes you by surprise. So I pray for that peace for people who are struggling with this. Lord, I pray that your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. That you would bring about your purposes. God, just do it quickly. I pray. And as we walk through these times and try to navigate all this, Lord, I pray that we would continue to look to you, that we would continue to lean on you for strength, for wisdom, for help, for peace. Lord, I pray that the people of that just entire region there in the Middle East, that people would be saved, that people would have a revelation of who you are. Like I know how that stuff's going to play out with Israel, but Israel's not the only group of people there. Lord, I pray for all the people there. that they would have a revelation of the true gospel, the reality of the Messiah, and that they would put their faith in Christ for salvation, that they would turn from sin, and that people would be saved. I know there's there's going to be all sorts of opinions and ideas about all of this and that's fine. I know there's scoffers and whatever. All these kind of things I I know. That's fine. Lord, I pray for them too. I pray for a, a, a soft, broken, gentle, contrite heart. A gentle spirit towards all of this. Because as it relates to end time stuff, we all, you know, have our thoughts and ideas and interpretations of this and that. But truth is, 
nobody knows. We may be fully convinced of our position, but we don't know because it hadn't happened yet. So Lord, even if we're fully convinced of a position that writes all of this off as just continuing um, aggression and violence in the Middle East that we've been seeing for ever, and it all makes sense in that interpretation and whatever, God, I pray that there wouldn't be a hard heart towards it or towards the people. Or just a, I'm sure I'm right, so I'm not even going to look at it or worry about it kind of mindset either. Help us all to be eagerly looking forward to that day when you return, you set all things right. So, Lord, help us to have soft hearts. Help us to have an eager spirit, open eyes. And, Lord, we pray that you would come and come quickly. Also, I'm just reminded, um, Yom Teruah. Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets, whatever you want to call it. Um, the new year for the Jewish people. It starts just in, what, two, three days? And all of this happening right then. During what's supposed to be a season of teshuva and returning to the Lord, and then starting the new year with this high holy day or days. But right now there's no there's no peace, there's no anything. It's it's chaos. God, I pray for peace. And I I don't know what that looks like. I don't know the end of these things because I don't know if these are the specific things written about in Scripture or not. If it is, then yeah, I know how it plays out. If it's not, I don't. And I'm not going to stand here or sit here and pretend I know. But Lord, I pray that in either one of those situations that it would come about quickly that there would be a reduction in the loss of lives and bloodshed and again hate And Lord, I thank you for this, for this opportunity to be able to come on here and pray. And I don't know, I hadn't even opened my eyes since the beginning of the stream, but <laughs> so I don't know who's here or what other people are saying or praying for, but um, God, I thank you for this community, this this window and opportunity to be able to connect with people across the world many of which do not see things the same way as I do many of which who disagree with me on this that and the other and all that but also many brothers and sisters in Christ I'm so grateful for them and for this And Lord, I pray that you would give each of them, each of us, myself included, a greater burden for prayer, a greater burden for the lost, a greater burden 
to do what we've been called to do, to share the gospel, to live out the great commandments and great commission, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourself, and also to go, to go into all the world, making disciples of all nations, preaching the gospel to all creation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that Christ taught us, and remember that you're with us even to the end of the age. Give us more of a burden. Help us to see people as you see people. Like the old song says, break my heart for what breaks yours. And Lord, I don't know what the rest of the stream looks like yet, because again, we're just getting started and starting a little bit differently, but through this stream, I pray that the kingdom would advance because of what you do, that you would draw people to yourself, that you would convict people over sin, help them to have a revelation of the holiness of God, which shines light on our own wickedness and rebellion and our need for mercy and grace and salvation. As we open the word, I pray that you would illuminate your word to us, help us to have greater understanding of who you are as you've revealed yourself in scripture, what that means for us, who we are in light of that. That we would have opportunities and open doors to plant seeds of the gospel today. And I pray that you would be the Lord of the harvest, that you would draw people to yourself, that people would be saved because of what you do through this. Not me. Who am I? Who cares? I'm nobody. Lord, I pray that people are drawn to you, that any good that they see in me or anyone else in chat, that it would all be reflected to you. Because without you, man, I'm the <laughs> lowest of the low, the worst of sinners, as Paul says. I know me. But help me to humble myself and exalt the name of Christ through it all. 